want to say praise the Lord to everybody. Truly, it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. It's a good day to enjoy Bible study and to be able to uplift and magnify the name of the Lord. Truly, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth in and they are safe. Uh, we come into a close of a, another new year and we just want to give thanks and praise unto God for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Truly, I can honestly say if it had not been for the Lord on our side, there's no telling where we would be. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we certainly do want to uh, remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Remember those that are sick and afflicted and going through in their bodies. Uh, remember also those that are experiencing this pandemic and not only the pandemic, but also the financial hardships that go along with it and the um, emotional hurts and pains as well. And we also want to uh, remember those that are being strong, strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Those that uh, the Lord, if you allow me to say it this way, the hand of the Lord is upon. Truly, uh, we want to pray for our leaders, pray for those that are uh, doing the right things to help uh, help people in need and help people that are going through. Also pray that the plans of God would be established in the hearts of men and women so that we'll be able to carry out his plans in the name of Jesus. Uh, let every heart pray, oh gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, we just say thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love and your kindness that you have shown toward us. We thank you, Lord, for how good you've been, how good you are, how good you will be. Lord, you never change. And we thank you for your great mercy that you've shown toward us. We ask you, Lord, that you remember men and women and children everywhere. Continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Remember those that are going through in their bodies. Remember each and every request. We ask you, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on tonight. Send forth your anointing, send forth your word, send forth your strength, your comfort in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you would protect from dangers seen and unseen, rebuke death, rebuke the devourer. And Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Make ways where it seem to be none. Open the windows of heaven. Pour us out financial blessings and spiritual blessings. Pour us out blessings that we don't have room in them to receive. Father, we thank you and praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we certainly do want to welcome you tonight to another uh, broadcast of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, where I am the lead pastor, Pastor Frankie L. Quinn. And we certainly do Thank God for all our ministerial help that we have here and all of our deacons and, and members that help to assist this ministry in moving forward. And we want to thank God for you all, our virtual church, that tune in on a regular basis to hear the word of the Lord and support and to give your, your hand of fellowship. And we also uh, want to certainly thank and praise God for our lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn. Um, as we uh, move forward into uh, the Bible study on this year, it's kind of ap uh, apropos, as they would say, as we uh, look into our scriptures and as we continue on this word, this word of God that God has given unto us as we move forward. And our subject that we've been talking about and getting into is the principles of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom. And this is particularly the principles of the kingdom, part number three. And uh, by way of review, before we actually get into uh, this particular uh, subject, 
Um, we've dealt and broken down into three parts. The kingdom of God, which we said represents God's character, the character of God, uh, who he is, the essence of who he is. And uh, part number two, we talked about uh, the kingdom of heaven, which refers to God's government, God's government, how he rules and reigns uh, in this world, in heaven and in, in, in heaven and in earth, and how he delegates that authority on earth to you and I so that we can live according to his uh, governmental rules and regulations and that we can uh, literally manifest the kingdom of God here upon this earth. And on tonight, we're going to be literally talking about the third element of the principles of the kingdom, which is uh, the kingdom itself. And when we're talking about the kingdom itself, as we begin to uh, talk about that and to move forward in it, we're actually talking about um, what God has established, has established within us. And I want to take you to a verse of scripture. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the third and final element of the kingdom uh, of God, which is the kingdom itself, which represents the kingdom culture. We want to talk about the kingdom culture on tonight. Amen. And we're certainly excited about the word of God because God's word is something to get excited about. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall every man live. And I uh, just want you to turn with me uh, to get started on tonight uh, at the book of St. Luke, the book of St. Luke chapter 17, the book of St. Luke chapter 17 and Jesus himself makes a, uh, a very profound statement and um, chapter 17 and verse number 20 uh, Jesus was asked and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come uh, he answered them and said the kingdom of God cometh not without with observation. Cometh not with observations. Meaning that you can't see the kingdom of God. You can't see it with your own eyes. It's, it's, it's something that you cannot see with your own eyes. And so if you're looking to and fro, hither and thither, uh, you won't be able to see it with the naked eye. That's what Jesus was saying. But notice what he said in the next verse. He said that, uh, verse 21, neither uh, shall they say, lo, uh, here, lo, there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And that, and that is a very powerful statement that Jesus made, that, that God's kingdom is within you. God's culture uh, it is within you, and it's established in you through his word, through his word, through his commands, through his word. That's how the kingdom of God comes within you. And it also is ushered in within you when you're translated into, the, the Bible says, the kingdom of his dear son through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost actually moves you into the kingdom and it's manifested in you through the word of God. When you get saved, get born again of the water and of the spirit, uh, you're actually translated into the kingdom of God and it's manifested in you uh, through the word of God. That's why Jesus said it doesn't come with observation. You can't say here it is, there it is. Why? Because it's in you. It's in you through the word of God, through the spirit of God. And you're translated into the kingdom. 
And once that happens, it's, it's amazing then that, that uh, God expects us to live a certain way. Amen? Uh, the Bible says, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And now we want to talk about God's culture, God's culture. When we think of God's culture, which was what's in us, uh, it's in us, and we should be manifesting God's culture or God's kingdom here on this earth. God has a prescribed way for us to do things. God has a prescribed way for us to act. God has a prescribed way for us to treat one another. God has a prescribed way and for us to interact with him, to ask and to seek him and to call on him. God has a prescribed way in which we ought to handle all of his resources that he gives unto us. And that's done through God's culture. And when we talk about culture, uh, culture deals with uh, customary beliefs and the way of living within a group. So when you think about culture, you want to think about a customary way, a way of living within a group. And uh, uh, they share shared beliefs and norms within that group. And that's, that's the, the key word to there is shared. There has to be a shared way of living, a shared way of giving, a shared way of beliefs. We should all believe the same. We should all have the same faith. We should all worship the same God. We should all treat others, everyone, the same way. That's how you know you're in the kingdom. The, the love that you show one toward another should be the same. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, it should be the same. When we uh, took a trip over there to England, when I went to England a couple years ago, uh, I was traveling in the plane, and I, and I remember distinctly in my mind, I was saying, Lord, I don't know what's it going to be like over here. And when I got there, uh, and went to the church, uh, they were worshiping the same. They were praying the same. They were literally singing the same songs. And they were uh, actually, when they are breaking down the scriptures and talking about the word, they were saying the same things that we said because it's a shared culture. Thank you, Lord. It's the same. And the Lord touched my mind. He said, uh, the reason why it's the same is because we all read the same Bible. We all read the same Word of God. And when you all, when you read the same Bible and read the same Word, you can't help but to be the same. Thank you, Lord. And, and I think about uh, when people go off to college, and uh, some people go off to be doctors, some people go off to be lawyers, some people go off to be uh, uh, social workers and so forth and so on. And, and a college can have all of those programs housed within it. But what makes those people, uh, when they leave a doctor, a lawyer, is the course of study, what they study. That's all unique to their experience. And when we study the word of God, which represents the kingdom of God, it makes us kingdom citizens. It makes us uh, members of God's kingdom, and we share the same culture. We share the same lifestyle. When dentists get together, they can talk a certain language. Amen? Why? Because they've studied the same thing. When the saints of God get together, we should be able to talk a same language. Why? Because we've studied the same thing. And it's very important that we understand that, that dealing with culture, uh, we have the same set of values. We should have the same set of goals. And those goals should be to uplift the kingdom of God, to live right, to love one another, and to love our God. And to see the advancement 
of God's kingdom. We should all have the same goals. We should all have the same practices. There, there shouldn't be a, 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 a multiple ways of, 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 of one to, to worship God. We should all worship God in spirit and in truth. We should all uh, raise our children to the same according to the word of God. We should all love one another the same. There shouldn't be a difference in our practices. And, and these things are all characterized by God's kingdom, by his culture. Um, you know, there's certain expectations when, when, when people are, belong to a, a particular household, uh, when you belong to a particular family. There are certain expectations that go along with that. Um, uh, some families have a notorious reputation of being uh, bad, uh, going to jail, and so forth and so on. Some people, families, have a, a, a reputation of being uh, good, doing good in the community, and doing good in the society. Same likewise with the children in the family of God. There should be a reputation that the, God's children have his character, which is honorable, which is holy, which is blessed, which is merciful, which is, uh, we could go on and on and talk about God's character. But that should be a, a, a hallmark of people that are in the family of God. There should be certain characteristics, how uh, uh, your very speech should betray you. The way you say things should betray you. If you are in God's family, thank you, Lord, and there's meal times come. It's God's culture for those that when meal times come to bless their food, to give thanks for their food. Thank you, Lord. And those that are in God's culture, when they get paid, it's in His culture that you give tithes and offerings. That's the, the nature and, and, and the way of living by being associated with God. There's, there's things that how we talk and how we live should identify us with Jesus. Amen? So as we uh, uh, begin to talk about these things and we try to talk about even the social practices, uh, how we uh, socialize in the community, how we live our lives, is unique to the kingdom and how we do things is unique to the kingdom and and uh, looking at then we want to go over real quick over here to the book of, of, of Genesis not sorry the book of Galatians the book of Galatians chapter number five and uh, a lot of these characteristics that we have, um, God gives them to us, and it, like I said, uh, comes through the Holy Ghost. And these are also characteristics um, uh, of the kingdom. If we have the Holy Ghost, we should be, or uh, the Holy Spirit, we should be manifesting these characteristics in God's kingdom and God's culture. Uh, Galatians chapter number 5 and verse 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love we should be manifesting the characteristic of love they should know us by the love that we show one toward another they should know us by the love that we show toward our enemies that, that, that no other no other nation, uh, no other kingdom uh, loves like God's kingdom. No other kingdom loves the way God has commanded his people to love. And uh, that should be a hallmark for us. Uh, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith, uh, uh, temperance. Uh, the Bible says against such there is no law. And those that operate in God's kingdom, they should be manifesting the fruit of the Spirit in their lives because that's part of God's culture. That's part of, of, of God, the way we live. Those are our values. Those are our norms. That's how we get things done.
So um, in saying all that, then we have to realize also that in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter uh, number one, let's turn over there to Hebrews chapter number one. And uh, we want to read verses one through five, and then uh, we're going to look at verse eight and nine. Hebrews chapter number uh, one. Thank you, Lord. We're talking about the culture of the kingdom of God. And looking here, it says in the book of Hebrews, it says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Verse number two. Hath in these last days he has spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now, uh, before God was speaking to us by the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, uh, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, all those prophets that are written in the Bible. But God says in his word here, in these last days, he has spoken unto us by his son, Jesus Christ. And y'all know that Jesus came into the world uh, to bear our sins and iniquities, but he also came uh, to establish the kingdom of God, God's rule within us. And the scripture says, when we think about and he says, in these last days, he's spoken unto us by his son. We've been quoting a very familiar passage of scripture in the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter number nine and verse number six. It says, unto us a child is born, unto us, notice, a son is given. So the child will grow up into a son, and notice it said, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, meaning that the kingdom of God should rest upon him. Uh, and, and it goes on and talks about his name. But, but I'm trying to get you to see that, that God's kingdom is manifested to us and through us by Jesus Christ, through his teaching, through his doctrine. That's why Jesus said, the kingdom of God cometh not without observation, but the kingdom is within you. When you receive the doctrine and the teaching of Jesus, it helps to manifest God's kingdom within you. God's kingdom power, God's kingdom authority. It gives you what you need and how to relate in this new and living way if you follow the teachings of Jesus. Amen? So notice what he says. Thank you, Lord. He says, verse number two in Hebrews chapter number one, verse number two, it says, in these last days, he's spoken unto us by his son. And that son is Jesus, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Notice that. Jesus is appointed heir of everything. It's an appointment. Uh, all things were given to him. All things were made by him. All things were made for him. And without him, there was nothing that was made. Notice what it says. Hey, Hebrews chapter number two, number one, and verse number two, it says, after these last days, spoken unto us by his son, God has, whom he have made, uh, whom he have appointed. Now notice, it's an appointment. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's an appointment. His father gave him power and authority and it's an appointment. Notice, uh, heir of all things by whom also he had made the worlds. Everything was made by Jesus. Verse number three, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, notice, sat down 
on the right hand, notice how God is establishing himself. Uh, at the right hand of the majesty. Amen? On high. That word majesty is, is a reference to kingdom authority. You, when you talk of majesty, you're talking about a king and his glory and his reign. God is referring to his son as a king. Amen? That, that is set down beside him uh, in majesty, in glory, in honor. Amen? Hallelujah. Now notice what he says. Uh, uh, verse number four. It says, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. We know Jesus has an excellent name. <laughs> Ah, I could go off on that, but I don't want to. Thank you, Lord. Verse number four, five, it says, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, notice, thou art my son. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Notice what he says. Unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be uh, to me a son. And the reason why we're, we're focusing in on that is because all power in heaven and in earth has been literally given unto Jesus. When Jesus died, and got up all out of that grave, he made the statement himself. Thank you, Lord, that all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Notice, it has been given unto me. He didn't, he didn't usurp it. He didn't take it like the, like the devil tried to take it. It was given unto him. The reason why he was given unto him is because he was obedient unto death even the death of the cross and he gave his life as a ransom for you and I and he obeyed every word uh, thank you Lord that proceeded out of the mouth of his father where he earned that title thank you Lord he earned that, that inheritance and he was given all power and authority to establish God's kingdom within you amen Hallelujah. So, so let us see here. Let us, let us drop down then to verse number 8. Hebrews chapter number 1 and verse number 8. Notice what it says. Thank you, Lord. We're, talking, we're still talking about Jesus. But unto the Son, he said, notice, thy throne. Uh, thy throne. Notice the language. Thy throne. A king has a throne. Jesus is a king over a kingdom, which is the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Notice, thy throne, O God, is, in, is for ever and ever. Notice, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy what? Kingdom. Thank you, Lord. And that's what we're in. Uh, we're in, we're in God's kingdom. Notice, a scepter of righteousness, the scepter uh, symbolizes uh, uh, authority. And the scepter of Jesus' kingdom is righteousness. The authority of Jesus' kingdom is righteousness. In other words, righteousness deals with right behavior. What you doing that which is right in the sight of God. That, that you live by the word of God, which is righteous. That's what rules in this kingdom. My God, hallelujah. Anything that's done unrighteously has no part in the kingdom of God. We have to live according to righteousness. Amen? Notice what he says. Uh, he says, uh, verse number eight, uh, but Unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Throne is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness 
is the scepter of thy kingdom. Notice, verse number nine. Thou hast what? Love righteousness. We must love righteousness. We're in God's kingdom. We manifest the culture of God. So therefore, we must love righteousness and hate iniquity. Iniquity is evil. Uh, we got to hate evil. Uh, you can't flirt around with evil. You got to hate it uh, with a perfect hate. If you don't, it will it would lend itself to, for you to have an occasion to fulfill uh, that which you do not hate. Amen? <laughs> so he says, you've got to hate iniquity, love righteousness, and hate iniquity. Uh, let me read that again. Verse number 9. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, verse number 10. Uh, and thou, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Verse number 9, my bad. Uh, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And I'm coming to that verse to show you uh, the, the culture of the kingdom of God. It's in righteousness. Uh, it's not in iniquity. And Jesus it was, is anointed. Amen? He's anointed uh, to, to be our king. That's why the scripture says uh, about Jesus and the gospel that the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. Thank you Lord to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. He has, he has, he has uh, sent to open the blinded eyes to preach the difference to the captain. Uh, thank you Lord and, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus. 
Amen? Hallelujah, my God. And I want to say this as well, you know, because sometimes uh, 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 we have the we have the mentality and the thought that goes through our mind when we walk in with the Lord and and we we are waiting for him to give us something. Amen. We're waiting for him to give us the victory. We're waiting for him to give us strength, you know. And 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 when it comes down to you waiting on the Lord to give you the victory, the thought God has is when He gave you the Holy Ghost and you got saved, He gave you the victory in that day and in that hour. Hallelujah. So so it ain't about you walking uh, and to obtain victory. You got victory uh, when you cry out out the Father. Hallelujah. He gave you the victory right then and there. And all you got to do is to walk in it. Amen. Hallelujah. You follow what I'm saying? You, all you got to do is put it on. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all you got to do is to receive it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If I if I uh, got Monique out there, and if she said, Daddy, I need a raincoat because it's raining outside. Uh, and I say, here, honey, take the raincoat. Uh, and and, and I've, I've given her the raincoat, amen, so that she can overcome the rain. Uh, all she has to do is receive it and put it on. Amen. Uh, and then go walk in the rain, protect it. Uh, that's the same way with God when he delivered us and brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. We, we, we have the victory. Amen. Hallelujah. I want y'all to hear me here. We have the victory. All we got to do is receive it uh, and walk in it. Hallelujah. It's not something that I got to conjure up. Uh, it's not something I got to build myself up to. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, hallelujah, the Bible says that he led captivity captive and he gave good the Bible says he descended into hell. Uh, come on here, somebody. That kind of old shot. He descended into hell, took back everything that the devil stole, uh, which he stole our victory, he stole our peace, he stole our joy, he stole our healing. Uh, and we can go on and on what he stole. Amen. But Jesus recovered it. Amen. He regained it all. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you're in Christ Jesus, he just don't say, well, I'm going to give you a little bit of victory over this and give you a little victory over that. Amen. He ain't doing that. <laughs> he gives you power. Uh, he gives you deliverance over everything. Amen. Everything. Thank you, Lord. So, so, so I want y'all to get that in your mind. Hallelujah. A lot of people got the misconception that, well, when I when I when I get myself built up, I'll have a victory. Amen. No, oh, it ain't about you building yourself up. Hallelujah. To, to have the victory. You got the victory. You just gotta come to the awareness of it. Hallelujah. You just gotta come to the knowledge of it. Hallelujah. When you become aware, when you become knowledgeable, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, you'll be able to walk in it. Thank you. Lord. Walk in your authority. Walk in your power. Walk in your anointing. Walk in your gift. Walk in your calling. Hallelujah. Because it's been given unto you. Hallelujah. Right? The day you cried out, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands and just give God the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm coming at the devil net today. Hallelujah. Because uh, we, we ain't nobody to be pushed around. Hallelujah. We're somebody in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, so have that in your mind. Have that in your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And we're talking about, my God, we're talking about God's culture. Amen. The kingdom culture. And God has a specific way for which we ought to live. 
Amen? Here on this earth. We ought to be manifesting the kingdom of God here upon this earth. As Jesus gave in the model prayer, he said, pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught us that the kingdom of God cometh not without observation. You can't see it, but the kingdom of God is within you. God's kingdom is within you because of his teaching, because of the doctrine, because of the word of God. And, it, and you're translated into the kingdom when you receive the Holy Ghost through his dear son. You're put into a position of power. You're put into a position of authority. You can legally say, you can legally say, as Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, the majesty of God, because you are in him, you yourself are literally sitting with Jesus in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, my God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I got Bible to back all that up. Hallelujah. So, so, so you're sitting far above principalities, far above powers, far above iniquities. Hallelujah, my God. You're sitting in a position of authority. Amen. Hallelujah. To execute God's business. Am I right? Hallelujah. Now, let us look here. Thank you, Jesus. Let us look here. Thank you, Jesus. Um, go with me. I just want to hit this up. Thank you, Lord. Uh, in the book of Matthew, uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 13. And this is the parable of the seed and the soul. But Jesus says something that's very powerful. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that, that, that is given to us. And we've got to understand that this is given to us. Uh, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Jesus' disciples is asking him to explain the parable of the seed and the sower. And notice what Jesus says. And this is this is, this is equating to our uh, lesson on today. Uh, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Uh, verse number 10, let me bring this out. Uh, verse number 10 Jesus' disciples says, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speak thou? Uh, 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 why speak is? <laughs> and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Jesus, why are you talking to them in parables? Note, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it is not given. And the reason why we hear at this verse is, is because it's given to you to know the mysteries of God's kingdom. Amen? God does not want to withhold any good thing from you. What, what sense does it make that, that he wants me to have all this power and to walk in all this authority and I don't know what I have. And I don't know what to do. Amen? Uh, that makes no sense. Thank you, Lord. How, what sense does it make? I'm saying, uh, well, uh, Dad, will you teach me how to drive this car? Well, get in and you figure it out. <laughs> that ain't God. That don't make no sense. Now, I know that's bad English, but that doesn't make any sense. Amen? You, you, that, you want them to know. Amen? That's the whole point. Uh, you want them to know. God wants you to know. Uh, and, it's, and it's your privilege to know. Uh, and it's God's good honor to show it to you. 
Huh? We just got to seek it out. Hallelujah. We just got to, we just got to call on it. Am I right? Huh? We just got to ask. Am I right? We just got to seek. We just got to knock. Huh? And the door shall be open. Huh? Hallelujah. You shall ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye what? Shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Hallelujah. And, and we've got to come to God in that kind of faith. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Uh, that's the kind of mindset that you have to have. Don't come in doubt. Don't come in fear. Come believing that you shall have what you ask. Huh? I'm saying that for a reason. Come with knowing that you shall have what you ask. Huh? God said in his word, Jesus, he brought that thing out. He said, uh, you being evil, know how to give your children good things. Huh? Will your heavenly father give you a serpent to them that ask him? Uh, that God knows how to bless you. God knows when to give you what you need. God knows uh, what you desire. And it is God's good pleasure to give it unto you. Why? He wants you to manifest his success. He wants you to manifest his glory. He wants you to manifest his power. He wants you to manifest his deliverance. Amen? He wants you to carry his word. A heck of a shot. Hallelujah, my God. So that, so that you can change this culture. So that you can change, make a difference. Hallelujah. In this world. Hallelujah. In the lives of others that need his help. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Now, now the other principle that we have to realize and understand is that when, when we receive the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, when we receive the Holy Ghost, the, let's go there real quick. Um, Acts chapter, yeah, glory. My God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter number one. My God in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Let's stop playing with the devil. Hey, hallelujah. He don't mean you no good. Uh, you, you came from the devil's kingdom uh, into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You, 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 you don't owe the devil nothing but a good whooping. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't spend too much time in his camp. All right? Acts chapter number one. Notice. Let's drop down uh, to verse number seven. Uh, Acts chapter one, verse number seven. They were talking to Jesus about at that time will you restore. Well, let's read verse number three. It says, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passions and many infallible proofs being seen of them for 40 days. Notice, this is Jesus. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Amen. Jesus got up out the grave and uh, uh, out after his suffering and he started talking about the kingdom of God. Notice, and being assembled together with them, commanded that them that they should not depart uh, from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized you with water, but notice, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, uh, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at that time restore again what? The kingdom of Israel? Uh, they knew that Jesus was coming to restore the kingdom. <laughs> and, uh, they just didn't know how it was going to be made manifest. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God. Notice. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put into his own power. But you shall receive power. Amen. You shall receive authority. You shall receive an anointing. Huh? After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Notice, when you receive the Holy Ghost, notice what he says. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Amen. When, that's the whole reason why you get the Holy Ghost. That's the whole reason why the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, and 
in, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is made manifest unto you so that you can be a witness of that the kingdom of God has come. Um, so you can be a witness of, of the authority and power that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Um, that's your first and foremost responsibility. Amen? To be a witness. Uh, a witness of what? A witness of the goodness of Jesus. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And all that he has done. That come on, shot. Hallelujah. When we are witnesses, we're witnesses of his kingdom power. We're witnesses of his authority. We're witnesses of, of his love and his mercy, of his grace. Hallelujah. We're witnesses of him. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Let's, let's move on here. Let's, let's, let's talk then about the characteristics then of the culture of the kingdom of God. At first hand, let me calm myself down here for a moment. <laughs> the first hand, we talked about the three parts of the kingdom. The, the kingdom of God, we talked about, y'all remember that first Bible class? We talked about uh, uh, God's character. Amen. That he's gracious. That he's merciful. That he's loving. That he's kind. Then we talked about uh, our last class that we had about God's authority, his, the kingdom of heaven, his authority, his rule, amen, the responsibility of a king to provide, to protect, amen, to give, amen. Thank you, Lord. And now we're talking about the third aspect of the kingdom is God's culture, his way of doing things, amen, his norms. I was telling the class earlier that that when I uh, went to England a couple years ago, I remember a specific conversation I had with the Lord uh, on that plane, uh, so many thousand feet in the air. <laughs> I was saying, Lord, what's it going to be like when I'm over there? You know, what's going to happen? You know, are we going to have church? You know, what's it going to be like? And 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 the Lord let me know that that you're you're in my culture, amen. You're in the kingdom of God. And when I got there, uh, it was like I was here in here. They were praying the same, the same anointing, the same Holy Ghost, uh, the same words, the same encouragements, the same testing trials, amen. The same love, amen. Because we are in the same culture. We're in the same kingdom. Amen? So it was the same. The same set of norms. Amen? Sin is sin is sin is sin. Victory is victory is victory is victory. Amen? Hallelujah. And the reason why he said it was the same is because we all read the same word. Amen? The same Bible. Amen? Um, that's what makes it the same. So we talk about the same God. We talk about the same Savior. Amen. We talk about the same deliverer. Hallelujah. It was the same. Thank you, Jesus. And, and that's how it ought to be. It ought to be the same. Amen. What makes it the same is God's culture within us. Amen. What makes it the same is God's culture within us. And, and, and who taught us God's culture? None other than Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus taught us how we ought to live in this life. Amen? To access the kingdom. How we should uh, be in God's kingdom. When you have a, a group of family members together, uh, you would expect them uh, to do things the same. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Uh, you would expect them to. Uh, to do things the same. And when one doesn't do uh, uh, what's been taught that is right, they, 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 they stand out. Uh, they don't, they, they are. Thank you, Lord. And, and they, they are showing that they are rebelling uh, against the kingdom no and once a person starts to rebel against the kingdom norms, 
then they start to lead themselves out of the kingdom. You don't want to get yourself out of the kingdom. Amen? Hallelujah, oh my God. All right. Now let's look here. So there's some characteristics, cultural characteristics of the kingdom that is literally taught by Jesus. And we've already established that Jesus is the head. Amen? He's our teacher. God has spoken unto us by him. Amen? And, and Jesus loves righteousness and he hates iniquity. Amen? Hallelujah. So um, let's go over. We're not going to read all of this uh, because it would take us too much time. But I'm trying to give you an overview of the kingdom. The overview of the kingdom is literally uh, found in Matthew chapter number 5, 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. And when I'm talking about culture, I'm talking about customs and beliefs. Jesus taught customs and beliefs that are to be in his kingdom. We have to, if we're going to be kingdom citizens and, and save saints, we have to accept the beliefs. Amen? We have to believe the same thing. And who is the standard? Jesus is the standard. Amen? Let God be true in every man or what? A liar. God spoke to us through Jesus. Amen? And when we talk about uh, customs and beliefs, it's a shared custom and belief. Shared among the group. Amen? That's why when God delivered Israel out of uh, the Egypt, he said, I've chosen you to be a peculiar treasure of priests, a holy nation huh? unto myself. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all with me? Huh? So we ought to be peculiar. Huh? We ought to be holy. We ought to represent God's character. And, and there's a certain way that we have to do things. Now, let me say this. That People who struggle in God's kingdom is because they're kicking against the pricks. Huh? They, they want to do things their way. But the Bible specifically says in the book of James, God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble. Amen? Thank you. You can't kick against God's pricks. <laughs> Or his word. You can't kick against the pricks and expect to be blessed. Huh? Thank you, Lord. God, let me say this. God is not like us. Huh? God is not like us in this respect. That, that, uh, uh, we, we would promote a sinner. <laughs> huh? We'll, we'll promote him. Thank you, Lord. We'll, we'll give him status. We'll put him on the board. Uh, we'll, make him, we'll make him a pastor. We would make him that. Uh, but God doesn't do that. Uh, God knows we got shortcomings. God knows we have issues. Uh, but, but promotion, when God deals with promotion and deals with deliverance, uh, God, God promotes and delivers those that are walking upright with him. Amen? Because uh, God is righteous. Uh, now, I ain't, now, I'm going to try to get me what I'm saying. Amen? That uh, I ain't saying God will uh, knock you down, beat you down. I'm not saying that right now. <laughs> what I'm saying is, 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 if you're looking to be elevated in God, you got to walk with God. Uh, if you want God to have favor on you, uh, you've got to live according to his word. Amen? Strive with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength uh, to live according to the word of God. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God knows when huh, you, you, you've done all you can. And then because he knows when you've done all you can, he'll impute righteousness to you. Hallelujah. Because he don't want to see you fail. Hallelujah. God God will help you. Amen. God will bring you out. Thank you, Lord. But he expects from you to do according to his word, according to his will. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, come on and give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, he established God's ways, his shared beliefs, his goals, his attitude. Amen? And he did that uh, specifically in the Beatitudes, in the, uh, I'm sorry, in the Sermon of the Mount. Now, we're not going to read over that, but I want, I want to give you, uh, don't, don't get nervous when I say this, I want to give you 20 aspects <laughs> of, of God's kingdom. Amen? I'm going to give you 20 aspects of what should be in you. Amen? Of how you should uh, act. Uh, how you should manifest God's kingdom. And Jesus gave these 20 in this uh, book of Sermon on the Mount. But he also spoke of more in the scriptures that he didn't cover here. But this gives us the basic outline. Amen? Y'all ready? Thank you, Jesus. You know, God is good. I got a half hour. Amen. And we can sit back and relax. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now, once again, these are found, the characteristics of the kingdom of God that should be in you are found in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. When you got a chance, when you get a chance, read that, study that, put that in you. That's putting the kingdom in you. Amen? Now, the first thing that he wants you to have, he wants you to have the right attitude. That's everything with God. That's everything with God. You've got to have the right attitude. And Jesus said it this way, be poor in spirit. Uh, blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the, the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Uh, uh, he that Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Huh? So your attitude determines your altitude. Anything and how you deal with God, you want to deal with God with the right attitude. You can't come to God haughty. You can't come, you can come to God, I'm going to say it this way. You can come to God angry, but you got to humble yourself. <laughs> you follow me? Huh? God ain't, God ain't intimidated by your anger. He gave you emotions. He gave you feelings. Amen? He gave them to you because he wants you to express them. Huh? But you got to control that. Huh? You better put a sir on it. <laughs> or, 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 or a thank you on it. <laughs> you follow me? Thank you, Lord. So your attitude means something. Yeah? You got to have the right attitude. All right? God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Your second uh, manifestation or, or cultural manifestation is he wants you to be able to influence others. Amen? Be the light. Be the salt. Amen? You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savior, it is thenceforth good for nothing. If you lose your influence, uh, if you lose your integrity, amen, you can't live any kind of way loose, amen. Uh, you can't be lying uh, and, and stealing, cheating, uh, can't be doing all of that. And compromising with the word of God in the sense that, well, uh, I, I, I'm just flesh and God knows my heart. Loose here. <laughs> you follow me? Thank you, Lord. People can make up stuff. Yeah. Amen? So, 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 so God wants you to have influence. He wants you to be the light. Huh? The light of the world. Huh? A city that is set on a hill that cannot be here. 
So God gives you influence with others. You use your influence to persuade people to come on the Lord's side. Amen? First thing, I'm sure y'all all experienced it. Uh, you witness. Uh, some people say, oh, they, they all hypocrites. Why do you be a Christian? Uh, they hypocrites. Uh, and they may not even say it. Uh, because I know even myself, uh, when the Lord was dealing with me about salvation, I said, no, nah, I don't want to go to that church. They was just at Jethro's with me. Uh, and they, they up there singing in the choir, doing all this and that. Uh, that and, 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 you know, I'm like, well, no, nah, I don't want to go talk to them about coming off of drugs and alcohol because they're doing it themselves. You follow me? Uh, you can't be a light like that. Come out from among them. What? Be separate, saith the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So, so God wants you to use your influence. Amen. You got influence with people. Amen. God wants you to use it to be a witness. Huh? When I'm saying that, I'm saying that with all acceptation. Uh, I want you to receive what I'm saying. God wants you to be a witness. Use your influence. Amen? All right. Uh, the third, uh, God wants you to rejoice in persecution for righteousness' sake. In other words, if you're suffering for his sake, God wants you to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. If you're suffering for your own faults, you take it, grin and bear it, and move on. <laughs> you follow me? But if you're suffering for the name of Jesus, God wants you to rejoice. I got so much out of that sermon Sunday when I'm talking about worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. God literally wants you to worship. Amen. And I found myself today when bad thoughts tried to intervene in my mind, I just started worshiping and them thoughts just rolled away. Amen. That's what God, that's the power. Amen. That God has given unto us when we worship. Amen. When bad thoughts try to hit your sister jacket, just worship. Hallelujah. When bad thoughts try to hit your monique, just worship. Hey, hallelujah. All right, all right. God wants you to rejoice, amen, in persecution. When people are talking about you, doing you wrong, when the devil trying to come up against you, that word persecution means persecution. Not just, they lied on me. <laughs> No, they ain't persecution. Thank you, Lord. They're they trying to take your stuff. That's persecution. <laughs> trying to run up on your children. That's persecution. Trying to take your life. Amen. Thank you. God wants you to rejoice. All right? Notice, uh, if you want to look at persecution, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 tells you when they were sawn asunder. Amen. Refused to, 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 to uh, uh, call on the devil. Uh, but 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 give glory unto God. That's persecution. Amen. Persecution. I gotta move on. My God. Persecution is when uh, the, the 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 one deacon Stephen uh, was was telling them about Jesus, and they got mad with him, start gnashing upon him, biting him. Amen. And and then they picked up stones and start stoning him. Huh? And then he called on Jesus and heaven opened. Amen. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God and he said, Father, forgive them. Huh? For they don't know what they're doing. That's persecution. Hallelujah. Shabbat. Hey, glory. Uh, and he wants you to rejoice. Amen. Rejoice. All right. Uh, what number are we on? Four. All right. Uh, the, Next characteristic we got to manifest, I got to calm myself down. Uh, be a disciple of Christ by keeping his word and, 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 and living it before others. Let me say that again. Be a disciple of Christ by keeping his word and teaching it to others. God wants you he said, he that is great in the kingdom of God is the one that keepeth this word and teaches others 
to keep it. So he wants each of us to pour into somebody. Amen? You should have a, a little disciple that you're pouring into. You follow? You should have somebody. You ain't got to be a pastor. You ain't got to be a teacher. Amen? You ain't got to have a title. But God wants you to pour into somebody. Amen? Pour into young people. Pour into old people. Pour into middle-aged people. Pour into children. Amen? He wants you to do that. That's how his kingdom gets transferred. <laughs> Y'all with me? That's how it gets transferred. And you should get you a little mini-me. <laughs> get that good mini-me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Somebody should be walking around just like you. And they should quote you. Grandmama said, Daddy said, Huh? Nana said, You follow? Quote you. Graham said, Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Quote you. You follow? God wants you to do that. That's part of his culture. That's how it gets passed down. Paul brings that out in his epistle in, in Timothy. Huh? How, how uh, he received his gifts through the laying on of hands. Timothy did. And Timothy was set under the, the feet of his grandmother, uh, grandmothers, Eunice and Lois. Amen? Pour it in. Pour it in. I thank God for Sister Jack. She poured in them boys. They be in the Sunday school talking about what she taught. Take. I said, where you get that? My grandma. <laughs> you know, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Pour into them. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Even uh, Demi, I'll be talking to her. I said, where you get that? Grams. You know, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Put it in them. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. I'm on number five. All right. Uh, God wants you to control your lust uh, and your anger. <laughs> in God's, it's God's, in God's culture, you got to control lust and you got to control anger. Amen. The Bible also tells you really to get rid of lust. Thank you, Lord. You can't get rid of anger because it's part of your emotion. Uh, but you got to be angry, but what? That means don't let it control you. You control it. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, God wants you to do that. That's part of his culture. What it what look like? Uh, me, the pastor, you see me going in on my wife, cussing her out, telling her off, almost but to choke her. Y'all said, that ain't the pastor. He didn't backslid. Huh? I ain't going to believe but uh, uh, lust. I'm letting, I'm letting lust rule me and overtake me. Huh? If I've got more women than members. <laughs> hey, you follow me? Uh, God, God, God wants you to control that. Amen? Control that. Somebody say control that. Control that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's what the scripture, when it comes down to uh, uh, your emotions, uh, your feelings, be temperate in all things. Amen? I mean, have self-control. Right? Thank you, Jesus. All right. Uh, also, that means guard, guard. Uh, in, in order for you to uh, control your anger, that means you can't allow your feelings to be on your shoulders all the time. Amen? You can't allow yourself uh, to allow everybody to push your button. Huh? Follow? Got to develop some tough skin. Thank you. Follow? Don't take everything personal. You with me? Because your, your, your emotions, uh, that fuels, that, cause, that can cause either joy or anger. Yeah. Amen? It's how you view it. All right. I'm about to get into my therapy class now. <laughs> All right. What number am I on? Six, six. Uh, God, six, God wants you to be faithful in marriage. Be faithful in marriage. 
Amen? That's God's culture. In, in God's business, he never wants anybody to get divorced. But there are grounds for divorce. Amen? And But God, his original intent, he wants you to be faithful. Fidelity. Faithful. Amen? All right. Uh, uh, number seven. Uh, God does not want you to take oaths. Don't swear by nothing. Let your yea be yea or your nay be nay. These are cultural characteristics. Amen? Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Don't take oaths. Don't say, I, I swear by God. I swear by my children. I swear by heaven. I swear by earth. Let your yea be yea or your nay be nay. Tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Uh, I feel like preaching up in here. Thank you. Lord. Just tell the truth. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Uh, number eight. Y'all ready for eight? Don't retaliate. People do you evil. This is what Jesus was teaching. If somebody hits you on the one cheek, turn the other cheek. He wasn't teaching you to beat, let somebody beat you down. He was teaching the principle of retaliation. Don't retaliate. Amen? People do you wrong. People do you evil. Don't try to get them back. That's what made David so blessed. That when Saul was trying to get him, he didn't retaliate on him. Amen? That goes a long way in the sight of God. And when God is chastising somebody for getting you, you don't rejoice in it. Amen? That's another form of retaliation. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. see, see, see. You know, don't do that. You follow me? Thank you, Jesus. All right. Um, number nine. You've got to love your enemies. We can spend all day on that one. <laughs> uh, you got to uh, notice, notice what he said. Jesus taught it. Love your enemies. He didn't say like them. He said love them. Love is, is a stronger uh, adjective, stronger verb, I'm sorry, an action, it's strong, you gotta love them, amen, and that, when he was saying love your enemies, he didn't say love them from afar off, we got a tendency to, to not want to be around those that hate us and dislike us, that's our enemies, uh, because uh, if, if you don't gain strength from God, how are they going to see the light? How are you going to feed them? How are you going to uh, uh, give them drink? Huh? Follow me? And Jesus said this uh, uh, about your enemies. That scripture that he talked about when he talked about uh, give to him that ask of you. He was literally talking not just everybody. He was literally talking about your enemies. He was specifically talking about your enemies. If your enemies ask of you, huh, give it to them. You're trying to win them. You're trying to gain them. You follow me? Don't say you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> Got my faith. Huh? No, that ain't, that ain't it. Huh? Why? Why? God is good to the just and the unjust. He makes his sun to shine on uh, the good and the evil. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Amen. So God wants you to be like him. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right. Where we at? Ten. Ten. We're getting there. We got halfway. All right. Uh, love your enemies. Okay. Ten. Uh, give to the needy. God wants you to give to the needy and the poor. Give to the needy and the poor. That's part of this culture, God's culture. Got to give to the needy, got to give to the poor. Take care of the poor. When you do it, that, that's where that scripture comes into play. It's more blessed to give than to what? Receive. Amen? So notice, when I give you something, I'm giving it to you, you have it, 
and, and I'm, I'm just saying it this way. Uh, that's all you get. But when I give it, I, I reap 30, 60, and 100 fold. You see? That's why it says more blessed. You get far more than what you give with God. So God wants you to uh, uh, literally take care of poor people. People in need. Amen? Jesus said, he was teaching that, that when, did, when, did, when did I see you naked? Uh, when did I feed you? Amen? He said, when you did it unto the least, you did it unto me. When did I visit you? Y'all remember? He taught that? Thank you, Lord. All right. That's part of the culture. And those, you'll see these themes, what we're talking about, throughout the whole Bible in different illustrations. Amen? Uh, why is it for us to catch it? Why is it difficult for us? <laughs> All right. Let's, what am I, number 11? All right. Uh, you have to have a prayer life. God commands that of you. Have to have a prayer life, and then you got to pray according to his standards. You got to pray the way God wants you to pray. Can't pray any kind of way, anyhow. Remember, Jesus said, don't use vain repetitions. Don't be like, don't be like the Pharisees. I like to stand in, in marketplaces with long Prophectories for their long garments on priestly robes praying. So when you pray, enter in your closet, shut the door. Amen? Y'all with me? All right. Uh, number 12. You're, you, have to, you have to treasure heaven and the things in heaven. You have to treasure heaven and the things in heaven. You have to value heaven and the things in heaven. That's why the scripture says, set your affections, what you love, on things above, not on things of this earth. Wear this earth like a loose garment. Don't get caught up in the latest style. Treasure what God treasures. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be what? Also, that's God's culture. All right? My God. Uh, God wants you to fast. 13. Fast. And you got to fast. Oh, I forget that book. It's in Isaiah, I believe, where it says, is this a fast that I have called? Um, and y'all forgive me. Isaiah 58, maybe? Something like that? 50-something? He says, is this a fast that I have called? That's the standard. That's the way God wants you to fast. That's the outline for the fast, to destroy yokes, to undo the heavy burden. Amen? Uh, to deal thy, give thy bread to the poor. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Alright? Uh, Fourteen. God wants you to manage your anxiety. Manage your anxiety and fear by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God wants you to manage your anxiety and fear by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, God wants you to depend on him. I thank God for our government trying to get us out a little bit of money, but, but you know, that's only going to go so far. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord, but we trust in God. Amen? I like to think that God touching their mind. <laughs> they ain't doing out of their own goodness. All right. Uh, number 15. Do not judge others. Don't judge other people. All right. Number 16. Uh, the keys of the kingdom is asking, seeking, and knocking. When you need something from God, you've got to ask. You've got to seek. 
And you've got to knock. That's a whole Bible class in and of itself. Because each one of those words means something. And, and they're progressive. It's progressive. You first ask. And then if you don't get it when you ask, you start seeking. Finding out, Lord, what's, what's wrong? How come I haven't gotten it? Am I motive right? Am I asking for the right thing? And then once he puts you on the right track, you start knocking. That means be persistent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Be persistent. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. This is good stuff here. Uh, 17. Uh, don't do, oh, do unto others how you want them to do unto you. That's in the kingdom. A whole lot of your questions could be answered. Well, should I or not? Do this to this individual or not? Say, well, do I want somebody to do that to me? <laughs> if you ask yourself that question, you can answer your question. If we were in a court of law, they say, ask and answer. <laughs> you follow me? Thank you, Jesus. All right, that's 17. Uh, 18, beware of false teachers. Watch out for people that are blind that are trying to lead you. Watch out for people that are trying to turn your heart away from Christ. False teachers. All right. Uh, 19, know the teachings of the Lord Jesus and do them. That's what that word Shema means. It means hear, O Israel, to listen with the intent to obey. Now, with God, he knows that you are listening and that you heard him when you obey him. You say that again. With God, He knows that you are, are listening when you or when you uh, when you hear Him and obey Him. If that's what that Shema means, it means to listen with the intent to obey. And the fact that you obey means that you heard Him. If you don't obey, you haven't heard Him. Follow me? Hallelujah. This is good stuff. Makes me excited. I got goosebumps. 20. Build your life on the teachings of Jesus. Now that's huge. That's the last one that he said where he said that uh, a wise man is like the one who built his house upon a rock. And then a foolish one is one that built his house on a sand. You've got to build your life on the teachings of Jesus Christ. Don't build your life on thoughts, ideas, and opinions. That's the culture. Amen? All right. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. And I thank, certainly thank God for this Bible study. And uh, we'll recap it in the new year. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, do we have any questions? Amen. We want to thank God for our Facebook listeners and praise God for each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, amen.